Hey everyone and welcome back to the Python Trading Bot series. In this series I'm deploying a factor investing strategy using Python. Now if you haven't watched the previous episodes make sure to go and check them out now as we'll be using a lot of what we've learned previously in today's episode. In the previous episode we looked at Quantopian and we're going to be using one of their tools for research today. So we're going to be using Quantopian's researching facility to try and find a factor that we want to use in our Python trading bot. So first head over to the Quantopian page. Make sure you have an account and then once you've got an account, you can then start using their tools. So we're going to head over to research and then notebooks. Okay, so I've got a research template here, which we're going to be using today. And I'll be linking this in the description below if you want to go check it out yourself. Okay, let's start off at the top. So we've got a few imports here. So to begin with, we've got, we're importing our pipeline, which is the way that we're going to get our data. We've imported a screen. So this is our tradable stocks US screen. So this means that we're going to be looking at how our fax performs in the US market. We import our data here and then we've got our sector classifier. So this is just sector data for each individual stock. And then we import alpha lens, which is the package that will analyze our factors for us. OK, so we're just going to press shift enter to execute the cell. Moving on, we've got a few constants here, which I'll go into later, but We've got start date and end dates, just a factor name variable here. So here we've got free cash flow yield, and then we've got our sector labels, and then two Boolean variables, which we'll be looking at in a bit. Okay, so moving on to this function here. Okay, so this make pipeline function will be used by Quantopian to run through and get the data between the dates we've specified. Okay, so first we want to get our primary data. So we imported sector data beforehand at the top, but for these two values here, we need to look into the documentation to find out how to grab them. So head up to documentation at the top and then head to data reference. So Quantopian has provided us with FactSet and Morningstar data. If we click on FactSet fundamentals, we can see all the different values that we can grab for each stock and the same with Morningstar. So let's say we want to calculate free cash flow yield. To calculate free cash flow yield, we need to grab free cash flow and then the enterprise value. So we can search the docs to find out how to call these. So let's search free cash flow. Okay, click here and we can see it's a Morningstar fundamental and we need to do Morningstar fundamentals dot free cash flow. Okay, and then for enterprise value, Again, very simple enterprise value. So let's head back into our notebook. Here you can see we've got MF, which means Morningstar Fundamentals, dot free cash flow dot latest. And then we've got enterprise value equals Morningstar Fundamentals dot enterprise value dot latest. Okay, so this is how we get our primary data. Now we can calculate our factor. So free cash flow yield is free cash flow over enterprise value. And here we've got a simple equation. Now we're going to create some screens, so they're masks, to make sure that we don't include any stock data which doesn't have any factor data and doesn't have a sector. And then we return our pipeline, giving it the columns that we want data for and our screen. So let's execute this cell. Okay, and now you can see in this cell we are simply running the pipeline, giving it our make pipeline function and our start date and end date, which we've defined up here. So when we run this, it will run the pipeline. So now you can see the pipeline running, and this will take about a minute or so, depending on how much data you're getting. Okay, so you can see it's finished executing the pipeline, and it took a minute and three seconds. So let's just have a look at what this pipeline data actually is. So here we've got factor data dot head, which is a pandas data frame function. Okay, so this is just showing us the first five rows. So on the index here, we've got our date, and then the stock name. We've got our free cash flow yield, value and then our sector value. So now that we've got our factor and sector data, we want to get our pricing data. So here it's just a simple get pricing function. We give it the equities we have factor data for, which you can see is this second level of the index. We give it our start date, our end date, and the field that we want, which is usually open price. Okay, so let's run that. Okay, so now we can see that it has run. So let's have a peek at what that data looks like as well. Okay, so for columns, we've got our equities, and then on the index, we've got our dates. So we can see the prices for each equity for each date. Nice. Okay, so now we want to calculate our returns data. 
and we also want to merge that with our factor data to create one data frame with factor data and forward returns. So AlphaLens provides us with a really neat function where we can just give it our factor data, our pricing data, and our grouping data, and it will calculate all of this for us. There are a few other parameters. So starting off with, we have our periods parameters. So this is our forward returns period. So here, for, by default, we have a one day forward return, a five day forward return, and a 10 day forward return. So we can see how the factor performs over differing timescales. Okay, next we've got quantiles. If we have five quantiles, that means that we'll be sorting the different stocks by their factor score into five different quantiles. So we can look at the performance of each quantile and see what we hope is that the top quantile will perform the best and the bottom quantile will perform the worst and they will go in between. And then we've got a group by labels and then we've got binning by group. Okay, so this is where our group neutral flag comes into play. If we bin by group, that means that a stock with a good score for a certain sector will go into the top quantile. This means that, for example, with the utility sector, they may have good scores all across the board, but they'll still all be evenly separated out into these quantiles so that you're not biasing particular sectors. So we've currently got group neutral set to true. So this will be something that we can change to see how the factor performs, whether we group neutralize it or not, depending on our preferences. Okay, so let's grab this merged data. Okay, nice, so we can see it's finished now. So let's just have a quick peek at the data. Cool, so we've got dates in the first level of the index, the asset in the second level of the index, got a one day forward returns, five day, 10 day, our factor value, what group they're in, so what sector they're in in this case, and then what quantile they're in. So now we've got all our data, we now need to analyze it. And a great way to analyze it is, is to visualize different graphs. And this is something that AlphaLens does really nicely. So we're gonna use their create full tear sheet method to visualize this. So first we give it our merged data. We then give it whether we want to go long short. So this is another flag that we defined up at the top. So long short defines whether we can go short an asset if it's got a bad factor score. So just because you may not be able to short stocks doesn't mean that you can take full advantage of this. For example, you can go long short of a benchmark. If we choose by group to be true, then we can see how the fact performs for each sector, which I think is a really nice function. So we're gonna keep that as true. And then finally, we're gonna move on to group neutral, which is again what we've defined above, and we've currently got that set to true. So we're not making any sector bets. Okay, let's give this a run. Okay, so now we can see that our tear sheet has fully loaded. So let's go ahead and analyze our factor. So to start off with, this first table shows us the, the min return, the max return, the mean return, standard deviations of the return, and the count for each quantile. So we want to see that the mean returns are negative for the bottom quantiles and positive for the top quantiles. We can also see the min and max return for each quantile, so it's nice to see a high max and a high min for the top quantile, and a low min and a low max for the bottom quantile, showing that there's not any outliers where, where we could get caught out. Okay, so moving on to our returns analysis. So we want this annualized alpha to be positive, so this is a good sign. This shows us that we uh, annually will gain 3.8% returns using this factor. Okay, and beta here, so this is the correlation between the universe returns and our returns. So you can see there's not really much correlation, slight negative. Okay, so then we've got our top quantile mean return and then bottom quantile mean return. So it's good to see we've got nice positive top quantile and a nice negative bottom quantile and then the spread. So we've got a good, good spread there. So now we move on to our first graph. So this graph here shows you the mean return for each quantile. So you can see for this fifth, fifth quantile, we've got a high mean return, and for this bottom quantile, we've got a low mean return. And so this outlines pretty nicely how you can see there's a slope up. There is correlation between the factor and returns. So the bottom quantile is fairly similar in mean return, but that's not too bad. We can still see that this graph is still a good indicator that our factor performs. Moving on to this next one, I really like this graph. This shows you the distribution of all the returns. And so we can see here that we've got, if just focusing on the one day um, forward period returns, so we've got the mean here, so this is negative, and 
for the top one it's positive so that's good but it also shows us the distribution so we've got our top quartile and bottom quartile returns ideally what we'd like to see is a fatter distribution and higher as that shows that the returns are hitting a high mark uh, more of the time whereas we can see um, for this factor that it, it does spread out quite a bit so there is quite a lot of variance um, but we can work on that refining our factor to try and get them a bit fatter and higher and uh, vice versa for our bottom quantile. Okay now we're looking at how the factor has performed since 2003. As we can see we've got nice up upwards returns. Drawdowns don't seem to too large or too too lengthy so it, it looks like it's um, performed pretty well and then here we've got another graph which shows us the returns by quantile and so we can see that the top quantile as expected performs positively and then the bottom quantile performs negatively we can see here that there's a lot of difference between our top quantile and the second quantile ideally what you'd probably want to see is a nice gradual increase in returns with the factor scores so that the fourth quantile would increase sort of midway uh, alongside it, third quantile would stay centre and then you'd see it symmetrically uh, on the bottom side with the um, second and first quantile. Okay so this is just the returns for different periods which you don't need to worry about too much. Here we've got the top minus bottom quantile mean returns, so this is Q5 minus Q1 and we can see it's mostly positive, we've got the one month moving average which can uh, help filter out all of this noise that we've got. So this, this looks fine. And now we're moving into each sector. So th that graph that we had at the top here, so that was across all of the sectors, and now we're moving into each individual sector. So we can see which sectors work well with a factor. So basic materials, you can see that this factor works quite well. We've got nice high returns to the top quantile and then low returns to the bottom quantile. And I see that upward sloping if you take the, uh, take the tips of the bars. Um, communication services, not too great. Um, bottom quantile still producing negative returns, but then we're not really following the trend um, in the top four quantiles. Um, so it looks like it doesn't work too well in communication services. Consumer cyclical, we can see that the fact there is a bit of correlation between the factor and returns in this sector. Um, same with consumer defensive, we can see we've got high returns there. Well, relatively high returns there and low returns here but you can see that the returns over five day period and ten day period rapidly drop so there's not what we'd like to see is is that the the three bars are about the same height which show that there is good good correlation energy this works really well you can see it's almost like a perfect graph a nice upward sloping line showing negative returns to the bottom quantile and high returns to the top quantile Financial services. Financial services is a bit, bit of a, a weird one when it comes to free cash flow just because of how their balance sheets work. So as you can see, factor doesn't really perform well here at all. Healthcare is showing good top quantile performance and it is following the trend a bit. So there's industrials, technology works and real estate works. Utilities, not much there. So what this could mean is if we wanted to use this factor for only certain sectors that work well, um, that could be the possibility. Remember that this is group neutral, so we're not making any sector bets um, at this point. Okay, so now moving on to information analysis. So IC, what does this stand for? This stands for information coefficient. So the formula for the information coefficient is two times the proportion correct minus one. So if you have an information coefficient of one, that means that you're predicting the stock movement correctly 100% of the time. And minus one means you're predicting it incorrectly 100% of the time. So here we've got uh, information coefficient of 0 0.009. So this means that we're predicting the correct outcome over 50% of the time, which is what we're looking for. So that's good. And these other stats are just statistics related to this. Um, but we can see that there is positive correlation. And here we can see the information coefficient over time, and we can see that following the moving average, it's staying above zero most of the time. Now we've got some more graphs related to the information coefficient, so the distribution, and then we can see the information coefficient by group. 
So this shows us how well it works. So we were looking earlier at the graphs that had the quantile returns, and we were saying things like financial services don't work, things like consumer cyclical don't work that well, and we can see that reflected here. So here we've got financial services not working well, utilities not working well, consumer cyclical not working too well, but other ones like healthcare, basic materials, we can see that they work well. So we might look to possibly run this factor only with those sectors. So now moving on to turnover analysis. So this shows us how quickly our factor decays. So what do I mean by that? So how quickly it decays is how long the signal takes to die out. So let's say we got a good score for a stock. If the next day it's then got a bad score, then it decays very quickly. But if you've got a good score for a stock, and it carries on for a while, then it means the factor doesn't de decay as quickly. And so here we can see what turnover we'd be looking at if we were going to employ this factor. So what you're looking for here is a relatively low turnover so that you don't have to spend a lot of money trading and on commission, because that can be quite pricey. So here we can see that we've got a turnover of on average about 0.025 for one day. So that means that each day we'll be trading 2.5% of our portfolio. Great, so now we've finished evaluating our factor. We see it has alpha, it does produce performance. There is correlation between our factor and returns. So now we can look into implementing this in an actual portfolio and back testing it to see how it would have performed in a real life, well, simulated real life situation. Thank you for watching. I hope this has helped explain how you can analyze a factor to see if it has alpha. In the next video, we're going to be running a back test using just this factor and seeing where we could improve the factor in a more realistic scenario. If you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe for further videos, so keep an eye out on more videos in this series. If you have any questions, you can drop me a message on LinkedIn or put a comment down below. I look forward to seeing you soon.